Don't sing at me, sing to me. I'm gonna make you sound great. Why are you fighting me to sound great? I did it better than that. See, you're not, you're not understanding what this is all about. It's not about better. You're not doing this for me, I don't care. If I'm getting on your nerves, you can leave. If you don't wanna sing, just say that. Bathroom? No, get this line right, then go to the bathroom. On today's episode, we sit down with one of the most legendary R&B producers of all time. Troy Taylor's worked with Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, Boys to Men, the list goes on. But he also took Trey songs from a teenage kid with no music out into the superstar that we know today. After an epic story about the making of one of his hits, Troy broke down his whole artist development process. Honestly, the whole episode is basically like being a fly on the wall in a Grammy-winning, multi-platinum producer studio session. What are we waiting for? Let's get right into it. I was going to try and top Tank's intro on the R&B Money <laughs> podcast, By bro. far, the, the best intro I've ever had in my life. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, like, at first I was like, well, is he serious? You know, just he some of the accolades. Serious. I know, but he some of the serious. accolades, I was like, yeah. is he on the board of R&B? <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't nah, know what was, that was made. That's what made it real funny. He yeah. was dead serious. It yeah. was incredible. Yeah. Yo, Henry, can we just edit in? I was going to say, we'll just, we'll just clip it and yeah, put yeah. it in. In the building, we have a master of the craft, deity in the building. His work is biblical, etched in stone. I speak of a man who spans decades of R&B excellence. He sits on the board of the R&B Elders Association. He is a rule maker in all things that are decided in terms of what R&B is and how R&B lives. This man has cultivated farms of produce that continue to serve and feed the R&B community. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking none other than His Excellency, Lord Troy Taylor. <laughs> Yo, so throughout this episode, can you just randomly comment, I just work here? I just yeah. work here. Okay. Yeah. What's that about, bro? Um, Because <laughs> that's in every, I know. Yeah, every IG caption of I'll yours. I'll tell you what. Remember what you said about, what's your thing that you say? You're just trying to figure it out? Figuring out the music industry. Figuring out the music. Well, at, at a certain point, it became like, everything has changed since when I came in the game. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, we don't know nothing anymore. Mm. So it's just like, you know what? I, I, hey, listen, I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you don't know, hey, I just work here. Does so it, it just take became, the pressure off a little bit? Yeah, it, it, not only that, it just, it just lets you know that I, I don't know, I don't have all the answers. And I'm just here to do what I need to do. Don't expect much but expect me to do what I need to do. Take everything anyone says with a grain of salt and like create your own path, but also just soak up as much game yes. as, as you can. You and know and I, mean? I think how, how Rico Brooks put it in one of our early episodes is he's always a student of the game. You gotta yes. be a student just forever. You never forever. stop being a student. Right. And again, that's another reason why I say I just work here. I'm, I'm here to learn. I'm here to teach. I'm here to whatever it needs to be done. Do you have any ways that you do learn? I was going to literally ask that exact, like, yeah, where like, do you do, learn? Yeah. How where do, you do learn? I learn? Yeah. People know that I've, work with upcoming talent all the time. However, I do select people that I can learn from, mm. but they just never know I'm learning from them. <laughs> so it is a, it is a uh, two way street. For example, my assistant, he doesn't know this, but he has a very meek, mild personality. Wow. He's very, very nice and very um, easygoing. I under you here. I'm not like that. <laughs> Even if I don't show it I, inside, I really. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, being around him, he doesn't know, but I learn how to be slow to answer, be slow to speak, or don't be as crass. So, people. People. That, learning from people. That, that's yeah. who you're learning mm -hmm. most from. Yeah. yeah. This, I take bits and pieces from different people. And I think what's great about what you're saying is that everyone always thinks that they need to be learning from someone who is like in a further place nope. than them that, or nope. like. I think it's about knowing what, who you are, what you have, what you don't have, what you know, what you don't know. And then if you find one thing from somebody, that's it. It doesn't have to be a lot. Yeah. That's it. So, all right, let's do, let's do a version of the songs you didn't know that Troy Taylor produced. Mm -hmm. Let's just do like five of your favorite ones that, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. always catch people by surprise, but that maybe you're like most proud of. Um, Sweet Lady is a double-edged sword. 
Because mm-hmm. <laughs> on one half, I'm proud of it, but the beginning of how it all came about, I'm not. It and, was torturous. Uh, so it turned out to be, it's bittersweet. So I'm proud of it on one hand, but then, you know, um, Tyrese and I have gained closure. Uh, it took 20 plus years, but we finally got a chance to talk about what happened during the making of Sweet Lady. Can we hear about the oh, making no, of Sweet Lady? Oh, no, it was simple. <laughs> uh, the record company, I was like, is he going to just... I need this story. Is he oh, no, 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 it's real simple. dangle this over our The head. record company wanted him to do it. He did not. And um, I didn't know why. I found out 20 years plus later or why he gave me a hard time. Um, but he gave me a hard time. He stood me up the first night. At the studio? At the studio. Oh, man. And so back then... The way we did demos was on the ADATs. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> ADATs <laughs> look like a VHS. No it looks yeah. like a v- okay. it's a VHS, but you record music on it. Okay, yeah. I was so like, t- t- talk to me like yeah. I am the fifth grader so that I am. Imagine a cassette. Um, like, okay, I feel you. Plop, 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 okay, VHS. you don't need to. VHS. You don't need to. <laughs> yeah. Let Troy explain it, bro. <laughs> I know Can't he argue knows. That. I know he does. <laughs> yeah. So, um, when you do a demo on a VH on an ADAT. Um, you're going to have to do it over because we were on tape and we weren't in Pro Tools yet. Mm -hmm. So we was on the thick reel to reel. I had to redo the background vocals and I knew that Tyrese didn't want to do the song. So I figured, well, he can do the backgrounds with me. And then the bridge was still open, hadn't been written to. So I figured he could write the bridge. Maybe, you know, make, make him a part of the song. So now he'll feel differently because now he's a part of the song. So I'm there and waiting on him and still waiting on him mm. and getting bored. So I do the background vocals to the hook. And he's still not there. So I just do all the harmonies because you... Because I'm going to do all the harmonies. It's just And, well, it's and you're fun. bored. And you're bored. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> doing backgrounds is fun for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's still not there and I get something to eat. He's still not there and nobody's telling me anything because we didn't have cell phones and computers and all that stuff. So he still didn't come. So I decided to write the bridge and do the backgrounds on that too. (laughs) So finally it got late and then I just decided, you know what? Forget it. Um, There was an industry party that was going on that evening that I knew of and I had no plans on going because I thought I would be recording. So I said, I'm a, I'll go to the industry, but I'll go to the party. I forget what party it was. Mm-hmm. So I go to the party and I'm walking around. Who do I run into? No. 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 Oh. no. <laughs> 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 yeah, literally. <laughs> so um, I was like, yo, I was, you know, I was at the studio waiting, <laughs> waiting for you. Writing your oh, song. Oh man, I, I, yeah, I told him I want to start tomorrow. Mm. Now the ironic thing about this is I was going to I, I had a young lady coming in That I was flying in And I was having her fly in The next day specifically Because I felt like I would be done by The next day So she'll come in And you know I'll record that night And get the song done And she'll come in the next day So now he's throwing me off So I can't you know Go get her from the airport So Because we got to do the session Yeah. So my partner at the time, he goes to the airport and gets her and brings her back to the studio. And now I'm recording him and he's just giving me the hardest time on the song. Like, you know, what do you mean? What's he doing? Okay. So if you know the song, the song is now any other day, stop. I would play cool, stop, but I can't now stop. He didn't, that cadence, he didn't like it because it was, it wasn't ongoing, elongated singing. Mm Mm-hmm. It was like any other day. It's more staccato. I would play it cool, but I can't. He hated that. <laughs> he hated that. He wanted to, no, any other day, I would play it cool. He wanted to. <laughs> okay. He, he wanted it, it just yeah. long and full. And so he did not like it at all. We get, to the, we get through the verse. Now, Sweet Lady has a slight call and response. Sweet Lady, sweet, would you be... It's like boom, boom. So when we got to the hook, it was too, again, controlled. He had to stay in the pocket. So he didn't like that. (sighs) But then when we got to the second verse, some second verses are different. But in this case, 
It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do that again. Oh man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Therese, this is the way the song goes. I'm sorry. This is so meanwhile, the young lady is sitting next to me and she had never been in the studio before. And she's just watching how difficult he's being. She's like, are all studio sessions like this? Well, this is what you do? Well, this, <laughs> this is crazy. She whispered in my ear. She was like, uh, is, it, is it hard what you're asking him to do? <laughs> Damn, that's no, not good. No, it's not. <laughs> it's actually easier. Why, does it, why doesn't he want to do it? It's a nice song. Good question, I'm baby. Like, he doesn't like the song. Why? It's nice. He doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> now... This, so, this story comes in a few parts because later on, that girl would go on to be my wife, now my ex-wife. Anyway, but now, okay, so... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I was like, yeah, how long neither here to, nor there. Okay. Um, and we're not opening that door, Troy. <laughs> we don't have to go that We don't got there. time for that shit, all right? This isn't that kind of podcast. <laughs> I just wanted to throw a curveball in there to say <laughs> oh, who no. she ended up being. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, got through that and now it's time to get to the bridge, remember? Yeah, I wrote the bridge and everything. <laughs> yeah, we listen know. to the bridge... And the, and the background... Right. Right. If you listen to the bridge, he's literally just responding to the bridge. Mm. So the bridge is the lead, more so, and he's just ad libbing. Mm. And then we get to that hook after the bridge, he has to do one more time that call and response, and then I would let him run free. So, yeah, that one last ad lib that he does at the end was one take, and that was what he wanted to do all along. So if you listen to the song, he just let it go. Hey! he been wanting to do that the whole song. Mm -hmm. So what was his attitude towards it? Like when all things are said and done, um, right? Like did well, he finally well, come around? To a he, hit. Didn't come, he didn't come around for a long time because when it became a hit, that means he has to sing that song every time he does shows. Uh, all the time. So he had done it for a year. Oh, he, he, hate, got, he hated you, bro. <laughs> he hated, it was like, yo. Bro, he hated Troy, bro. And the story, we don't have to put sale, Sweet yeah. Lady in the set list, I think. <laughs> yeah. We could skip that one, I think. So years later, um, I would, I would and, and years later meaning, Literally 2021 or two. Holy shit. Yeah, now I'm at his house and I'm um, in, in out here in, in Atlanta. And um, he, had, he had no idea. This, all these years, he had no idea of this story of how I felt because... You know, it, um, it was in maybe it was just inconsequential to him. He didn't understand the well, backstory. Yeah, no, he didn't. He didn't understand. What what what's missing here is a year later when it came time to work on his next album, I had a song ready prepared for him that Jonte and I did. Jonte did "Sweet Lady" with me, Jonte Austin, mm -hmm. and we had our, our song prepared. And by this time, I had my own studio in New York, so I was going to have Jonte come down. And because Jante lived in Atlanta, I lived in New York at the time. I was gonna have Jante come down and Jante work with him because they were the same age. And so we hadn't seen, uh, Tyrese and I hadn't seen any see each other since Sweet Lady blew up. And so I felt like I don't wanna deal with him. So Jante, you come. <laughs> Well, at the last minute, Jonte couldn't make it. God dang it, Jonte. <laughs> so now here I am. I got to. Oh. So I play him the record that we held for a year. First and foremost, I found out that Tyrese was a right around the corner for a whole summer recording and never came to us. Mm. So we had mm. to figure that out. Why isn't Tyrese here? He's right around the corner. How come he hasn't, you know, come over here? Mm -hmm. We gave him his biggest hit. Like, mm -hmm. how are you not going to come to us? Right. So they figured that out. They worked that out and he came, but he only gave me one night. Mm -hmm. So I had to play the song that we had for a year for this one night. And it so happened to have the same sweet lady vibe. Oh, oh no. God, Troy. <laughs> This shit again. Jesus this shit again, <laughs> Troy. Well, really? <laughs> didn't you learn a damn thing, Troy? Well, hey, by this point, it's a hit. Right. So should it be a problem? Not, not to And me. sometimes <laughs> some people do a hit record and they come back with a record that's similar to it to go, oh, man, this is the same vibe. So I thought it was going to be cool. <laughs> oh, God. He listens to the whole thing. He goes through the whole, and he just got this look on his face. And he's like, yo. And it's just sound like sweet lady. <laughs> and I was like, okay. He's like, you, you don't understand. And that's when I would find out that he had to, to he had gotten to a point where he stopped singing the song when he did shows because he was sick of sick of singing it. Wow. But the fans wanted him to sing it. Oh, man. So he, I was like, 
You don't understand, man. I, I I don't even sing Sweet Lady no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, this this is just like Sweet Lady. I was like, it, it really wasn't, but I understood. It's the same tempo, same, same energy of the record, yeah. but on purpose. Yeah. So I didn't think he was going to piss a fit like that. And so now it's like, oh gosh, I didn't have anything else prepared. So I had another record Jante and I uh, did. So I played it for him and... Um, he just, he liked it. So we decided to cut it. So now remember the first time sweet lady, I didn't know him and I didn't know his temperament. So now I know his temperament this time. It's like, okay, he doesn't have to have re be restricted, you know, constricted and restricted of, of, of how he wanted to sing. Cause now he's Tyrese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now this particular song, he only has this, not this time to learn the song. So we don't have much time. Cause I remember I only got one night. Why do I only got one night and I gave him his biggest record? <laughs> and he's down the street. <laughs> he's around the corner. <laughs> Literally yeah. down the street. But he had to go to LA. So, so I'm letting him learn the song and I'm teaching him the song. But I'm only teaching him the song so he can learn it and then do what he wants with it. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of me teaching him the song, yo, I got to do it like that. And then I'm like, Tyrese, I'm just trying to teach you the song so that I'm, you can do your thing. Well, then that turned into a back and pulling tug. <laughs> And I got up and I just got mad and I walked out and I kicked the, the cabinets and the door and <laughs> screamed. I'm like, yo, y'all need to come and get your man. I cursed back then, so my mouth was a little potty. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's the most adorable way to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> curse anymore. So, oh, um, and so it turned into a big, you know, we all came back in the room and I explained to him, you know, um, through the whole time that you was doing Sweet Lady, you never once said our name. Because by that point, it had won an American Music Award and he got up there and he didn't thank us. Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, we get a lot of work based off of your acknowledgement and shouting our name out for the song. Mm -hmm. So we had this long talk, long, needless to say, <laughs> he didn't end up keeping that song. <laughs> so that turned into my ex-partner feeling a type of way, but he never told me. And then uh, one day uh, we were going to this meeting and I, I, who we were going to see was a person that was responsible for getting me started, Timmy Registford. And um, he worked at DreamWorks. So we were going to have a meeting with him. So in essence, I knew Timmy before I even knew my partner. So I felt like, yeah, we're going. Well, he had plans on going by himself and I didn't understand that. And he's like, no, Troy, I'm going to do this by myself. I'm just going to do this by myself. I'm like, why? It's Timmy. Like, what are you talking about? Nah, man. And so he he had a way of throwing in. See, that's what I'm saying, man. Because of you, we ain't on the Tyrese next album. Mm. So he had been holding that in. Mm. Long story short of that, ooh. <laughs> I, of course, declined to go to the meeting because I was so mad. Mm. Because see, there was a something about what he said. I'm the reason why we're not on the album because he didn't decide to do the song. But I'm in the reason he is here in the first place. <laughs> right. So it's kind of like, <sighs> yeah. you can't throw that in my face because I play two parts. Yeah. The reason why he's here in the first place and who cares if we don't be on the second album? I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like... But I, I went home, I went in the basement in the dark and I rocked back and forth and I told God, any way you get me out of this situation, being my partner for 12 years at this point, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done, like literally done. And so therefore, um, so, so that whole situation was the callous of me leaving my 12 year company. Wow. So Tyrese never knew none of this stuff. So now back in his house, we're coming years later, and I tell him this thing, whole story. things that happened prior to, and he's just like, <laughs> his mind's really? being blown. Like, and imagine yeah. Tyrese listening yeah. to this story. Bro, I didn't know, man. I'm so sorry. I, di I didn't know. And I was like, eh, that's cool. So you're saying that because I do, 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 do I'm like, eh, yeah. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> man, he was It played so, out okay, though. Yeah, yeah, it played out really good. Let me take a moment to interrupt this episode and tell you about our friends over at DistroKid. DistroKid is easily the best DIY distributor 
on the marketplace. Let me tell you why. It's only $23 a year. That's less than two bucks a month for you to upload unlimited music to all of your favorite streaming platforms on the planet. It's so easy that it takes me like five minutes per upload and that's when I'm multitasking, dealing with my two-year-old son. Hands down, my favorite part about DistroKid is how easy it is to add credits to an upload. I don't know what distributor you're using, but with DistroKid, it's super easy. You can put the artist, the producer, the songwriter. I'm pretty sure you could put like the junior associate engineer of a song. And me, I, I wanna know who's on the record. And if you sign up using this link, you're gonna get 30% off an already insanely low price. And you can finally start adding your collaborators because they are checking. They will notice when their name's there and they will Thank you for doing it. Let's get back to the episode. What do you think? Okay. The story leaks into, because Trey Songs was, my ex-partner was the reason why I knew Trey Songs in the first place. Mm. Because Trey Songs' stepdad and my ex-partner went to high school together. Oh. And so he wanted him to listen to his son, who's 15, who says he wants to sing, but he raps. And so since my ex-partner does not do music, he's the business side more so, he's like, well, I'll send him to Troy. And so that's how I ended up meeting Trey. So now Trey is supposed to be our artist. So now that I'm leaving, I can't take Trey with me because Trey's, I met him through him. That would be kind of wrong if I, mm. so I told Trey, I'll still work with you, but you have to stay with him because I met you through him. Like he's the reason. Well, Trey didn't like it, but he would go in, da, 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 come back and come over my house and we would continue on, you know, because he's 15, at, going on 16 at this time. Mm. So long story short of that, my ex partner ended up kicking him out because he told him that if you do 60, 60 songs, he'll start shopping him a deal. Well, that's stupid. What if he's not ready? And 60 songs as in... 60 songs full, 60 songs ideas. What? Because he's not the music, he's not explaining to Trey what that actually means. Well, at this point, Trey did 60 plus some odd records. Were they good? No, they were, <laughs> but they were, you know, they were, just, he didn't say how they had to be. So he had stopped going in as much. He would go in, but not as much. And then he would spend more time with me. So my ex-partner uh, got mad. And started getting, you know, like, where's Trey? And he's not coming in. And then he kicked him out. Told him he can't come back. And Trey, man, <laughs> he was so excited. <laughs> now I don't have to go back. I can stay with you. <laughs> and so from Uncle that Troy. point on, he's seven. By that point, he's 17. No, he's, yeah, he's 17. And so I was like, you know what? I'll do your demo and, and and see what I could do. But like, were you doing it initially as somewhat of a favor or did you always see the vision? Oh, for definitely. Trey? Okay, you I, did. Yeah, no, because I was the reason why he, we were working with him. Okay, so. When he came over to my house for me to tell him what he, what I think. Yeah. That's when I saw it. Okay. And Trey. So yeah, from that point on, Trey was with us, but now I'm leaving. So to kind of put Trey in the middle of us, like a, 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 a divorce, divorce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's like oh you stay in custody yeah Battle. yeah so i had built all i built a relationship with trey already he was already coming with me different places and learning so to say that i'm leaving and he and and he has to stay means that what what, what i'm gonna do when he told him that he was excited and so because of that i decided to get him make his demo 10 song demo and shop it so what do you think Trey's superpower is? You know what I mean? Because he, he he had a pretty long career, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He, he dropped a couple years ago again, I feel like, right? Um, yeah. Um, one of Trey's superpowers is he has the ability, and back, and back then when he was younger, the ability to make the guys want to be him, but the girls want to be with him. Oh, mm -hmm. That's huge. That's a good one. Yeah. Because when you're a male artist... If you are have if you if guys look at you and like oh I want to be like Trey uh, especially he was skinny and so he never moved like he was skinny so he made all the skinny guys feel like oh, I can take off my shirt like Trey no one cares if my chest is scrawny Trey don't care <laughs> so and just just he had a a rapper mentality even though he was R and B so the guys thought he was cool. And then at the same at the same time, when you go to a Trey Songz concert, the guys don't feel out of place being there because they know the girls are going to be there. So they like him. 
but they like the fact that he get the girls there. So you got the guys and you got the girls. So that's one of his his abilities were to make to have both male and female really like him and his music. Yeah. So that's one of his uh, his superpowers and um, his ability to uh, captivate people vocally with his style because he didn't sing like anybody but him. Yeah, yeah. What do you think your superpower was when it came to like building Trey into the superstar that he became, right? Because um, you were obviously there from ground zero. Yeah. Right? And you saw him rise the ranks, worked on every project, right? Yeah. Over mm -hmm. what, was, two decades my, almost, right? He was my baby. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, what do you um, think you brought to that equation, right? Because you had been producing, you were an artist before, mm -hmm. you know, you weren't new to music by any means, but just mm -hmm. like him specifically, like that's where shit really... You, know, you really showed your stuff as a as a producer. Right. It, like really what I did was put all the artistry of me that was inside into Trey. Um, the superpower was the ability to pull out the starism that's in him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, when I met him when he was 15, he sang for me and uh, little things like when he sang, he didn't go out of key. You sing a cappella. Some people, if they sing long enough, they start drifting in key. So he has a good natural ear. Natural ear. For pitch, yeah. For pitch, which is very important. Yes. But at the same time, he's 15. He doesn't even know that he's yeah. actually good. In a key or anything. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't look at it that way. <laughs> right? The name of the song, Donnell Jones, Where I Want to Be. You know, people sing an acapella song. They're not going to even choose the right key of the song. They're just going to start singing my ear is very sensitive so I know it's not exactly the key of the song but okay you know but he sang the key and he stayed in the key the whole time so even though he was a rap known as rapper in high school uh, he said he wanted to sing so he had a song and he pulled out a piece of paper and he sang his song and the song had a verse and it had a hook and it had a second verse he didn't know that, that he had the right formula for a song He's just doing what he thinks. So that caught my eye too. Natural. So, and then he had this, 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 this look in his, in his, his eyes like this. <laughs> it's like, I can look at someone and see where it's going. You know, so when you say you kind of were able to pull the star out of him, mm -hmm. right? Can you share like in practice, what did that actually look like? Like, how were you actually helping do that? Trey became my vocal producer assistant. What that meant was if I have a session with an artist, Trey's going to get you ready. He's going to get you doing the verse or, you know, he's going to drill you a little bit, but he's nice and prepare you. And then I'm going to come and clean up. Sometimes you will start with me and then I would take a break and Trey would take over. But Trey's ear from watching me got sharper and sharper. So he already knew what I'm going to want the artist to do. So I used that time to teach him. So he was literally running sessions with you? Yes. Yeah, that's a big one. That's yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, Just everyone to fly like, on the wall, but who's actually... Who's the kid? Oh, he's yeah. going to start you. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> he's going to get you started on the first verse. Okay, so Trey, <laughs> quiet, he would sit down and he would tell him what to do, but he would base it off of what I used to tell him or tell him during, you know, in our sessions and that use that to be his practice. So it's a hands-on practice for him. You got to get the performance right. So how do you know to get the performance right? Because you know what they got to do. So you know what to tell him, but he was nicer. What are some of those like common phrases, some of those common like little tips, bits of feedback that you're giving? Like, what do they even sound like? Um, some people might just have no idea, you know? Mm, don't sing at me, sing to me. Ooh, he's already better. Keep going. You, you know what I'm saying? You're cooking. Because, you know, people sing and they sing kind of like with one tone mm -hmm. and they don't even give you different dynamics in their voice like they talk. Cause imagine if I just talk like this and everything was just like this and you just, you know, there's no peaks and valleys in the way I'm talking because I'm just talking. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and you feel like, okay. Yeah. Hey. Well, when people sing and they use one tone through the whole verse or whatever, it's like, you're talk, you're yelling at me. Mm. Can I get some dynamics? Cause when you talk, you would be like, Hey man, you know, because you know, I really did. But you know, yeah. Yeah. so if you do that, when you talk, why wouldn't you do that when you sing? Mm -hmm. So if I don't get that 
that motion of phrasing, especially off of the lyrics that you're singing, then you're not singing to me. You're just singing words. Yeah, we talk a lot about that in our in our live streams. It's like it, you know, sometimes feels like one speed. Exactly. Like you yeah. literally have it on cruise control and on it's a just, on a road. <laughs> it's just one no thing. Emotion, there's no. Yeah, it could be tone or right. flow, just being the exact same. So I just say, sing to me, not at me. Yeah. Because right now I don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. I will say this. I had this thing where I used to think that if you had a record deal, you went through something some type of training. <laughs> I thought that <laughs> so, was what you were going to say. And I was and like, so how, funny. how do you know not what not to do? You got a record deal. Yeah. You can't hear your flats and sharps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no way in the world you can have a record deal and not hear your flats and sharps. Oh, well, there, oh there is well, Troy. Now there well, is. Well, I mean, <laughs> but initially I honestly thought that if you got a record deal, then you have surpassed the the teachings and understand and I didn't know you knew theory you had yeah. vocal training let me see your record label certification yeah. your breathing is <laughs> yes on point. and everything and yeah. emotion and you know but yeah. when they when they didn't have it I'm like why am I telling you how to sing yeah. that's how I looked at it wow. I'm telling you how to sing and you got a record deal <laughs> I'm just supposed to give you the song you right exactly yeah. so that gave me that got on my nerves alone. Yeah, that gave me the you know, and I'm ah, I, I got uh, like like it brings me back to why SOs around me because, <sighs> Usa, <laughs> he wouldn't yell at people. Mm-hmm. So wouldn't do it. Yeah, but <laughs> but bro, I've I've seen just even some of the clips that you post. Like you're still pretty hard on I artists am, in the studio. But I am nowhere near. Nowhere near. So what were you like before? <laughs> <laughs> like what were you actually saying sometimes? <laughs> Can you just like bleep yourself or something? You know what I mean? Can you censor yourself? Okay, hold on. Give me, give me like a, at least, let me, let I gotta me, know what he's talking about, cha- bro. Let me channel um, old Troy Taylor. Oh God, we're like relapsing him right now, bro. Um, let me see. Just remember, SO's here. So like, you can, you can you channel gotta look the- over at him. <laughs> no, no, I can, I can, I'm like, okay, so it'll be like, what the F is that? Really? Do that ish right. Like, mm-hmm. you effing doing that. Like, what the F? Like, yo, look. If you don't want to sing, just say that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> if you don't want to sing, just say that. If you if 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 I'm getting on your nerves, you can leave. Ooh. <laughs> oh shit. Look, you're not doing this for me. I don't care. Mm. Bathroom? No. <laughs> <laughs> Get this line right, then go to the bathroom. Ooh. Oh, shit. We'll see. No, but now now check this out. If you're on a line and you're trying to get this line right, there's a tone that you're using. To get the line right. If you leave and yeah. go to the bathroom, you're losing that tone. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got to spend a half an hour to get the tone right to connect the lines together. Yes. Mm. So am I in the middle of getting this one last line and you talk about you got to go to the bathroom? You're not going. <laughs> <laughs> but bro, this is what people need, bro. Yeah. But it makes sense. Other than the F-bombs, like I feel yeah, like I you probably bad. still say these types of... like I say freak a lot. Freaking, but like these um, just general themes of like if someone was trying to go to use the bathroom, would you still say something like that? No, you that ain't changing. That's what I mean. Yeah, no, that, that, that's because that but, just but makes sense what you're saying. Cursing with it, I know, yeah. I get that. Yeah. But like <laughs> the idea, the message, but the is, core, is sound. yeah, the core yeah. principles are still so because so, you're trying to get the song out. Yeah, you know, like, we're here to get the fucking music made, bro. Do you, like, know, yeah. do you know that people still to this day, and it's cross generations, that the essence of singing a song and delivering a song doesn't occur to them that they are actually telling a story and giving people a motivation to use their song for certain situations. They just look at it as singing a song for an album or a project. They don't get into the actual, what your role is when you come into the studio to do this song. Immediately I'm into that. Like, Okay, this is a sad song. Why are you showing off on a sad song? Mm-hmm. I feel I don't. I'm not. I don't feel sad. The words say you sad, but you don't sound sad. You too, Bert. You're trying to show off. You've got the listener in mind. Yes, you're trying to show off on a sad song. Why are you sounding great on a sad song? Like you're not supposed to sound great on a sad song. You're supposed to sound broken. Mm-hmm. And people are supposed to feel. Oh man, I felt that when he said that. But you're you're not paying attention. So I'm thinking like. Everybody should pay attention to something like that. Nope. No one cares. They just want to sound. So when I'm trying to get an emotion out of them, 
and they sang it good, to them, what was wrong with that? I hit every note. Mm -mm. What's wrong? So if I got to get you frustrated, so frustrated that you slip up and give me the emotion I need. Okay, next. That was good? Yeah. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> I don't like... I did it better than that. See, you're not, you're not understanding what this is all about. It's not about better. It's about something I can't explain. But you'll get it when you finish it and then sit down and listen. Mm -hmm. That's when you'll hear it. By that point, I don't want to hear nothing. Oh, man, this house, shut up. <laughs> don't, don't say nothing. I don't want to hear it. You gave me a hard time. All I ask you to do is just trust me, flow with me. You know what I mean? I'm going to make you sound great. Why are you fighting me to sound great? But because they don't get it, they don't understand. So to them, it's like, you just want it to be perfect. Actually, no, I want it to be imperfectly perfect. Mm. Yeah, that's one. That's a bar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think you made a post about um, how good Beyonce is oh, yeah. at being a, the true definition of a recording artist. Yep. So everything that you're saying, like the way that she's able to evoke all the different emotions and styles mm -hmm. in her recording process to get the song and get it. the feel. Yeah. That's why she's the, that's why she's the she's, fucking queen. Yes. You know, she gets and it. It, she understands it. Michael Jackson did it as well. Yeah. He gave you the, whatever the emotion of that song is. He, you felt it, not just heard him. You felt it as well. And now the kids today, they don't really study to apply. So without, you know, being able to get in a studio session with a legend like yourself, how can our community of artists, you know, specifically, how can they try and study to apply or how can they try and improve the way that their recording process go? You know what I mean? Like just, yeah. is there any like tactical things yeah, that you're- Yeah, pay maybe, attention. Okay, so what do you mean by that? I ask an artist like, give me a song that you wish was yours. And they'll have to think, oh, I, um, I love such and such song. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. I, I take that as a reference and I put it in my head. Now, if when we start recording, I take that, that you wish that song was yours or that artist, you love listening to that artist. And then I say, whatever that artist makes you feel, there's a reason why you love that artist. Channel that feeling into this. Again, they all that sounds like is, I want you to sound like them. No, I want you to, whatever feelings that artist gives you, express it here. Yeah. It's, you, it's pretty intricate, but they're not taught that way. They're not taught to listen and apply. So how much of an artist is like just natural born talent versus some of this like application and studying that you're talking about, right? Like um, you're born with 75% talent. That 25 is you now applying, learning, and, and how to use the 75%. The funny part is that 25%, if you don't learn it, it's not enough to get it to be 100. Mm. There's, there's plenty of 75s yeah. and 80s out there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, duh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the potential. The, 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 I, I, no, no, no. I like that song. No, but I like that song. No. <laughs> that one song that they sing, I like that song. <laughs> it's a whole album. And, but, but I like that one song. <laughs> so yeah. you're not getting the 25% that matters. It's not going into your craft, your vocals, your everything to make you a hundred. So like in, in, in the current state of things for Troy Taylor, like, you know, who's an artist that you're currently like locked in with that you'd say you're in like the development phase right now. Um, Papa J. Papa J. He's 16. Uh, when I first started working with him, he was 15. How'd you find him? Uh, his dad actually came to me. His dad sought me out and asked me, you know, to, cause he admired the way that I worked with Trey. Okay. So, he came to me, you know, to sit down with him and his son and in hopes of me doing the same thing that I did with Trey with his son. Sure. So his dad was an artist in his earlier years. Okay. So all that he learned and everything, you know, writing and, and carrying himself shows, how to make shows, how to do shows, how to put shows together, how to, he put into his son. So it became easy to work with his son because his son was already knowing what he wanted to do, how he wanted to sound, how he wanted to feel. Um, but he just needed somebody who would have the patience to help him articulate 
musically what he's hearing in his head. So ultimately, his dad was hoping that I would help his son do that. The tricky thing about that is that you can't just go to anybody. So he had been watching what I did for Trey a long time. So by the time I met them, you know, it was easy for me to go, um, so what do you want to do? Because this is how Trey learned. Tell me what you want to do. Oh, you can't tell me? Then learn. Learn how to tell me what you hear in your head. How do you want it to go? You don't know? Figure it out. I'm not doing it for you, especially if you have ideas. So his, 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 son, his dad taught his son how to articulate, but then he's not musically inclined necessarily. So if he has it a certain way he wants to go, hum it. Do you think every artist needs to be able to do that? To be successful it would or be, no? It would help. And, okay, but it, is it a requirement? I would say so. It yeah. goes back to that thing where I said, why do you got a record deal? You're supposed to have learned this, <laughs> okay. this, yeah. this. It's, 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 it's like a school before you become a, it should be the way. Before you get the record deal, you should have to become a freshman, sophomore, senior, mm -hmm. I mean, junior, senior. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you should have done all the 101 yeah, classes at least. <laughs> at least some type of artist development. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but you come in there because, oops, oh my gosh, it went viral. <laughs> you got a record deal. Ah, now you come to Troy, the mean old monster that's like expecting you to actually have learned something and you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And now I'm sitting here like, you see that line back there of people waiting to get in your spot who actually deserve it? And now I got to sit here and pour into you and you don't even deserve it? <sighs> okay, just pay me. <laughs> I just work here. I just worked here. <laughs> yeah, you've been slacking. No. You were supposed to be all episode, I just I worked here. I've been learning. You've been, locked, you've been so locked in, you forgot your one job was to say, I just worked here. I get like, that, but in the end of the day, I just work here. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> okay. yeah. You can't do it now and expect yourself to be saved. I think I did save myself. Oh my God. Though. All right. So, you know, one thing I wanted to you know, touch on is like, how important do you think it is for a producer to be able to engineer? Because I feel like you, in all of your videos, you're borderline like at the computer, you know, so like funny doing your the thing. New generation, they call me an engineer. That's mm -hmm. so hilarious. I know the engineer. See, I need an engineer like that. I am so not an engineer. <laughs> yeah. I am like really not an engineer. <laughs> I'm a producer who records. Yes. yes, that's it. And how important is it for a producer to be able to record? Well, you know, it's so funny because the producers of today, the young producers, they either aren't even showing up, they'll send the track, and the poor engineers have to copy, cut, chop up the record, and switch it around, and produce. And it's like, that's not fair. Because they're not getting any royalties. They're not getting royalties, <laughs> points, or anything. They're just getting that hourly wage, and that's yep. not fair for you to, the, and the producer's not even there. Oh. So how important for the producers to, to engineer extremely important because yeah. the engineer should be told what to do from the producer. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or, or they should be paid as a producer. Ooh, I just have an epiphany. That's what I'm going to talk about. Mm. Just because you did the track doesn't mean you're the producer. Ooh. That means you're a beat maker. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, Joe's posting it tomorrow. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 University yeah. episode <laughs> yeah. number 55. Um, yeah, they actually think that because they did the beat, they're a producer of the whole song. You're well, right. Well, here's the thing. You wrote the beat. You did the beat, and if I come in and I did the vocal production, here's a here's the oxymoron. You know, you did the beat, but you're the whole producer. I did the vocal production, but I'm just the vocal producer. Yeah. So that's that's ironic. Like, I did the other part of the song. So if you're the beat maker, I'm the vocal producer. Oh, you don't want to be called a beat maker. Well, I don't want to be called a vocal producer. So why don't we go? <laughs> We produced it together. Well, because the industry says, oh, because you made the beat, you are the producer. Automatically. It's so That annoying. is dumb. I hate that. Because there's a whole other part of the song that needs to be done. So if the engineer is doing the actual vocal production, shouldn't he be a part of the production? Yes. Do you think anyone can, you know, give their, you know, blunt, honest opinion? Or do you think it's like a thing that's earned? Right? Like, because you are Troy Taylor now. So I want to know what you think. So if you have, if I say it suck, I disagree. Okay. That's it.
So anyone who is invited into the session should be able to voice their honest oh, no, opinion no, no, no. in your you're, mind or you're, no? No, 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 no. You got to be asked. You can't just speak your opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, no, no. I have rules. Okay. okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you just don't. You don't. You don't just talk. You, <laughs> unless you're asked, you know what I mean? Okay. If you're able to be in a session, like, I don't want to hear what you got to say, you know, the entourage. But if you're the artist, I do ask them, what do they think? If it's something that I think could be better and they love it, I'll go with them. If I think they could do it better, I'll keep what they like, mute it, and say, beat it. Mm. If you can't beat it, then, you know, that kind of thing. Or if, or, if, or if I like it and they want to do it again, I'll mute it and say beat it. If you can't beat it, we'll keep it. But I guess like, I guess more of my question is like, I'm a new producer, right? Mm -hmm. I get into a session with an artist. Maybe the artist is new. Maybe they're a little bit more established than me, whatever. Like, should I feel like I have the right to, if I am producing the song, mm -hmm. should I feel like I have the right to push the limits with the artist and like trying, yeah. you know, make because this. Because that's your job. Right. If that's they, your job. If, if they yeah. trust you as a producer. If they yeah. trust me, but... Um, but it's almost like... But I almost don't even know if it's a, if they trust me. It's like, if I'm there to produce the song, clearly there doesn't there already exist this level of... Nah. No? Because they're always looking so that's at, a, yeah. what did you do? It has to be something you've done that they liked, that they trust you. Here's a funny thing, though. Even when you look on my page, what you're seeing is me when I come down after they written the song or written the idea, I don't start with them. They are required to record themselves. Mm. What you see me video recording, I come down to listen to their idea, what they have. If it makes me sit down, that means there's something there and I can work with it. That's when the camera goes on. Do you write lyrics? I can. <laughs> but do you like to? Oh, here's the insecure thing about me is I don't think I can, I'm, I don't think I'm cool enough. It's not your thing? In no, your, it in is your my mind, thing. In but my, in your mind, I don't, you don't think I'm cool enough. I don't think I don't talk the lingo that they talk. So okay, I, so you're. I can do melodies, sure, but I'm not confident with the lyrical part of it because it, I feel like what I say sounds corny. Sure, it's mm -hmm. an insecure thing. Yeah, I just saw this clip of this like British songwriter at like the songwriters conference being like, "We deserve master points." Mm -hmm. Do you think writers deserve you know a percentage of the master? I, I will have to say, um, I would be against it. Yeah. I wouldn't be against it for the sake of things changing. It was like, if we're changing that, we need to change this. If we're changing that, we need to change this. Let's make changes now. Like not just like accommodate only certain people. Let's really, let's go through this whole thing and change up. You know, like, why is it that if a label takes a song, the producer gets paid, but the songwriter doesn't? Right. That's, that's what I'm saying. Actually, yeah. that actually doesn't technically doesn't make sense. That's what I'm saying. Like, Why does the producer get paid and the songwriter doesn't get it? Well, after a while, if the songwriter gets a hit, then they can do a writer's fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to have some hits. You have to get there. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. So the producer works at McDonald's and he oops got a, a record placed. And he asks for his advance all the time. Yeah. yeah. So that happens that all advance. the time. Why we, doesn't a writer we, get... We get Henry advances out here. Producers mm. just, I think, used to be more hands-on. Producers aren't like you are. No. Modern-day producers no. aren't doing what you're doing. No. The shit At that all. you do, like, you deserve an advance. <laughs> you deserve yeah. a piece of the pie, the publishing, every part. But, like, yeah, someone's sending a beat off and the hit gets made. I just don't see... And ask for that advance? The loop yeah. maker asking for the advance. Oh, too. Yeah, let's get real down into it. <laughs> okay, before we go down that rabbit hole, yeah. Henry, we've entered a final segment of the podcast. I'm I'm pissed. We have like oh, we have like so many things I want to do. We have to do. I know. Like we didn't even get to talk about Aretha Franklin, but that's or crazy. Or Patty Labelle. I know. Or anyone. Or Whitney. Well, or anybody. We haven't had a part two, but man, Troy might have to be. Troy like, might have to come back we'll, quick. We'll come back. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, this is the final segment. Mm -hmm. It's called the Rapid Fire Rampage. There's three parts. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start with some short answer. Okay. Rapid Fire questions. Let's get into it. Rampage! Starting off real deep, real philosophical here. Oh, God. Troy, how are you doing today? I'm awesome. Fantastic. Moving on. Give us your top three quick tips for people to make better songs. Study the lyrics. Make sure it's a conversation. That's one. Make sure a five-year-old can sing it. Oof. Yes. 
Like T-Ron said that. Like, mm, yeah. That's two. Make sure your tone goes with the lyrics, the melody. Make sure your tone goes with the melody of the lyrics. Beautiful. Troy, invent an app. Pitch me an app. Um, I want this app to take quirky lyrics and make them cool. Okay, perfect for you. Yeah, yeah. You spit in like an idea. Here's my like. here's my lyrical mel- here's my lyrical idea. Yeah. Now, give me all the slang and everything. <laughs> I'm pretty sure ChatGPT can do Maybe. that right now. Well, Troy. AI can. Yeah. It could even go regional. Like, yeah. make it a, a Baltimore kid with <laughs> yeah, this. You know what I mean? Um. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's fire. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Um. Give us on that note, your brief stance on AI and music. Just okay. Top thoughts. So I think that there's a space for it. It's actually cool. I like AI personally. I think that um, it should make you more creative, not lazy. Yes. It's like auto-tune. I don't think it should make you lazy. I think it should make you creative. For example, splice. The ideas and getting the ideas are, is good. I don't think you. I don't think you should use them straight out. I think you should challenge yourself to chop them up and and use them in different ways. I don't think mm-hmm. that you should play them exactly how they are because you're going to be pissed when you find out all the people that use exactly how it is. Mm-hmm. So I think with AI, I think that it's okay to use it, but I don't think it's okay to just lay on it the way it. Is I think you should use it for the idea to spark an idea and then go from there. I love that take. That's so good. It's amazing. I think that's how everyone so should happy. be using AI yeah. across all industries. Like 100%. we even don't do a good enough job yet. Yeah. We're like trying to dabble with like doing AI generated like prompts for mm-hmm. topics of discussion and like certain yeah. things or whatever. We don't even do enough. But I think that if you just use it to like get the ideas yeah. flowing, yeah, mm-hmm. they're jump off points. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to do it. That's fire. Troy, your dog. Just learn to speak English, mm-hmm. okay. but you have to give it an accent to speak in. What accent are we giving your dog? So my dog Logan, Logan. perfect. Uh, he's a he's a golden doodle. Okay, who and now he, speaks English? And he yep. thinks he's human. He, well, now he, he is. really does. Now he really is. Um, yeah, he's part he's human he's now. Talking. Uh, Non-American accent. I'll clarify. Oh, yeah. Daddy, can I have a treat? <laughs> he's British. Proper British. <laughs> he's just a, Lo- Logan. That's just the way Logan. he looks. Logan. It's Daddy. supper time. <laughs> he, he looks British. I he just it. gives me that. UK the way vibes. he looks at me. Yeah. He looks at me like a very. Like he'd call you bruv. Yeah. Yeah. Like say, bruv. It, yeah. Boy, bruv. Yeah. It's time for tea. <laughs> or a bottle of water. <laughs> Troy, what is the one thing you really feel like most music in 2024 is lacking? Emotion. <laughs> That's it. That's going to be a five second clip. That's I'm just going to post that. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> this last one is hilarious. I already had it written, but we can modify it slightly. Um, what is your favorite curse word? Maybe abbreviated or. <laughs> no. I don't curse. Can you give us like. I don't curse anymore. What it starts. What was your favorite curse word? Oh. Do you ever slip up? Do you ever slip up? I have to be. The, I have to be at the top of my brain mad. Yeah. And it, and it all comes back. Mm-hmm. Literally. So you have relapsed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> For sure. I have to be totally mad. Because okay. at that point, there is no guard. And I'm going to say everything that I'm feeling. There's no amount of channeling SO that can work. Yeah. Yeah. So you did not no. say fuck Have you ever you. seen me mad like that before? One, One time, time. <laughs> um, it's what, very what? it's very sparse. But if I had to say, if I had to, if it was a curse word, what's what would my curse word be? Um, I feel bad for cursing. Let me think. Now, let me actually. think about my I back in that. the day. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. What was it? Oh, I I did a lot of f bombs. A lot of yeah, f's. yeah. F's. Oh sure. yeah. That was that even was, in his example. Yeah, yeah. Of, like yelling at someone yeah, in the studio. That it was, was the first thing I said. Four yeah. or five f's. It was all yeah, f's. I one ish, and then yeah. like four or five yeah, yeah. f's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Majority it, it, were f's. It's right. definitely the f bombs. Yeah, sure. yeah. Moving on to part two. This is a this or that. I'm gonna just give you two choices. Pick one. Starting with hooks or verses. Say that one time. Hooks or verses? Hooks. Drums or melodies? Melodies. Wait in the merch line or see the opener? Oh, I like that. Kind of cool, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say see the opener. Yeah. Keep TikTok or ban TikTok? Keep TikTok. Kendrick or Drake? Drake. Ooh. Major key or minor key? 
major. Always sing instead of talk or always skip instead of walk? Always sing instead of talk. And finally, become a full-time country singer or leave the music industry forever. Ah, uh, full-time country singer. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I want to see sure. that. Sure. Sure. Yes. Troy Taylor country album on <laughs> the way. Soon, baby. Baby. <laughs> we incepted that idea. Well, I did now. my truck. Breelin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've yeah. already dabbled. Yeah. I dabbled. Perfect. The final part is the word association. I'm going to say one word and you just respond with the first word that you think of okay. off the top of your head. It's going to be a great time. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. Starting with music. Silence. Content. Personality. Dog. Cat. Green. Brown. Studio. Lounge. Uber. Lyft. Chocolate. Cake. Regret. Happiness. Chorus. Hook. Business. Pleasure. Lil. John. Trey. Songs. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> this has been Troy Taylor. You, you, you the go. Go, man. Appreciate Thank you coming you. on the podcast, man. Thank you. Thank Guys, you. this dude has hit Come on, man. Man. hit after hit. If you didn't take away anything but just how you should be just so much more intentional with your recording process, like that is it for me, bro. It's the one. It's, it's the thing that I care most about when I'm listening to, you know, new artist music. And it's I, just to hear you like put your perspective mm. on it. It made me feel a little bit better. I hope y'all are fired up and going to the studio right now. Right now. Get Come out of on, here, man. Like, comment and subscribe before you go, but then hit the studio. Peace. Bye bye.